We'll also be watching MGM China when it starts trading in the next hour after parent company MGM Resorts beat the highest analyst estimate in its fourth quarter earnings. Revenue there rose to $2.6 billion with MGM China net revenue jumping 10% to $548 million. Let's bring in Bloomberg Intelligence gaming and lodging analyst Margaret Huang. So Margaret, it looks like for MGM Resorts and MGM China, they're uh, raking in some jackpot here. Yeah, that's right. Um, when it when we talk about fourth quarter, actually, you know, we had strong business across both the VIP as well as the mass segment. Fortunately, on the VIP side, they had a slightly unluckier quarter um, compared to the last year's um, fourth quarter. But still, it's optimistic and, and good in terms of business overall, even without the Kotai property, um, in which they've actually debuted just last week. Yeah, that's right. Speaking of the Kotai property, the Kotai Resort there, uh, opening just in time for the Lunar New Year. I understand you got a sneak peek. What are your thoughts on the property after heading over there? I mean, it's a beautifully done property. It's very much a premium mass-oriented property, contemporary, modern, with slight Asian flair as well. Um, and just, again, beautifully done. But when we walk around the property and you get a sense of it, you know that they're just not quite ready. They had mm. re reached a, a series of delays, actually, um, and only 900 rooms out of the 1,400 that were actually open um, during that period of time. And at the same time, you also have tables that were quite limited, a small portion being direct VIP, not junket VIP, which is actually critical in terms of really raising that ramp up and revenue growth um, for a particular property. Yeah, what about the other Macau casinos? We were speaking to the CEOs leading up to Chinese New Year, and they were saying, oh, they're booked out, they got early bookings were great. I mean, how did it all turn out? Actually, it's true. So, I mean, it's it's interesting when you walk around each property in each each region. I went to the peninsula, which is the older section, as well as Kotai, the new section, and business was a buzz. I mean, you can tell that, um, you know, their rooms are fully booked um, when and the third and fourth day of Chinese New Year, actually. Um, and and for MGM particularly, we do think that because of the fact that they were so late to open and they didn't have the time to really fully promote themselves, you know, that may have been or maybe a miss in terms of their ramp up. But for the rest of the operators, we certainly feel that, you know, it's been a great time for them. And this is the time to really maximize their product and their rooms and bring a good mix of business across the board. And what was the mix in terms of mass market and VIP? visitors. I mean, is it still VIP that's kind of leading the pack here in terms of propelling the Kotai area in particular? Yeah, I mean, VIP will always make the headlines. They are the revenue drivers. Um, it's hard to say right now in terms of clarity which segment of the business because you always have that one VIP player that comes in and swings everything. Um, but as far as the mass is a good indication, overall there's a lot of traffic going around these properties. Um, but for a VIP that's still central and core in terms of providing a premium accommodation for these players. Right. Um, and so we do feel that, you know, with January numbers that actually just came out um, yesterday in terms of the split, I mean, VIP was up 41% in January wow. and with mass up 30%. So, um, again, overall, business is a boom for both segments of the business. In yeah, Margaret, we've certainly heard a lot of noise, I guess, in the last couple of weeks that could potentially hamper what we're seeing in, in, in this rebound in, in Macau. I mean, the resignation of Steve Wynn, obviously, there were some reports about they could be legalizing gambling in Hainan and stuff. I mean, how does that actually impact in Macau in a long-term prospect, do you think? Right. You know, I think with every uh, news that comes out, there's always some volatility that goes across the board for these operators. And particularly for Wynn, um, you know, I think in Asia, we do see him as more of, you know, this is a businessman that's reputable in the U.S. Um, but in Asia, I think most clients think of Wynn as a product, mm -hmm. a high-end product. So it's difficult to say, okay, that's going to certainly impact this company. I think for now, for Asia, it's going to be business as usual. Um, you know, the property is still one of the best in Kotai um, as far as we see now. Um, and so that is, again, just certain noise. But long-term growth drivers are still there for Macau. Um, Hainan, again, is something that it comes up periodically. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we do definitely see some interest as to why China would want something like that, to have that they can control and oversee um, of the business that happens in the gaming um, sector. But in the near term, of course, we don't potentially see any impact for Macau. Yeah, I think we spoke to Alan Zeman just a couple weeks ago saying, yeah, never trust those sources. That's right.